Well, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over DARVIS. Now, what is DARVIS? Let's begin. DARVIS stands for Deep Abstract Representation, Visualization, and Verification of Deep Learning Models. Now, what does all that mean? Well, in essence, DARVIS is a deep learning IDE by IBM, which allows you to create, train, and of course, do inferencing tasks on your deep learning models in a very simple way. In fact, without even touching a single line of code. You can create your entire deep learning models and in fact have them give have the product give you advice about those deep learning models and as to what you should be doing with them. And of course, all of this without creating a single line of deep learning code. It's all going on in the back end and you can convert your deep learning models to Keras code with either a Tiano or TensorFlow back end as well well as CAF code. Now this is a very, very interesting IDE and in fact I would like to say a big thank you to the IBM Research Lab in Delhi, India for actually telling me more about this. In fact, just earlier this month I was in India for my keynote and workshop for NASCOM's Big Data and Analytics Summit and while I was there IBM invited me to their research lab in Delhi to find out more about what IBM's actually doing behind the scenes with deep learning technologies. And while I was there, I would like to say a big thank you though uh, to Ashish and Sri Ram and of course their entire team uh, for actually arranging so many different great sessions for me. And in fact, one of those sessions was about Darvis and how you can use a deep learning IDE to create all of your different deep learning models. In fact, I would also like to say a big thank you to the entire Darvis team for actually making this possible, and especially Anush for actually in introducing me to all of these concepts and telling me more about the internal technology of Darvis. But now let's get into how you can use Darvis to create your own deep learning models. Essentially, with Darvis, you can create your own deep learning model representations. And so you can actually drag and drop individual widgets. And these little widgets, or uh, essentially uh, in a node red flow, you can actually drag in these boxes. And these boxes can be convolutional layers, pooling layers, uh, activation layers, dense layers. All these different layers are supported by this API. And so in essence, you can drag in all these boxes, you can connect, make connections between them, you can make parallel uh, layers, you can do a lot of different things with Darvis. And then once you're done and you've created your entire deep learning model, you're ready to then go ahead and actually convert this to CPU or GPU, Tiano, TensorFlow, or CAF code. Now, when you convert to Tiano or TensorFlow, it's powered by the Keras SDK with either that ten Tiano or TensorFlow backend. And so that is how you can actually build this system. In fact, not only will it do these layer definitions for you, it'll even create the entire code for reading your data, training the model, validating the model, and testing the model. In fact, there are lots of other amazing features that this application provides, and just one of those features being a paper to deep learning code conversion. That's right, you can take diagrams of deep learning models from papers and actually convert them instantly to actual deep learning code and run your training, inferencing, or whatever else you might want to do on that deep neural network. But now though, let's get over to the Mac part where I'll show you how you can actually integrate Darvis with your deep learning development and how you can actually use Darvis in order to do extremely quick deep learning development. In this case, I'll show you an example of how you can train a convolutional neural network on the MNIST dataset. Let's get to it. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'll show you how you can actually implement these convolutional neural networks with Darvis. Now, if you actually go ahead to the Darvis homepage, you will see a page a little bit like this one, where you're going to see their original homepage. Once you're there, you can actually log in, uh, and it's actually as simple as logging in with a Google account. <laughs> and so, of course, you're going to be going over here to darvis.myblimix.net, uh, and you will just log in with your Google 
Google account, your Gmail account, uh, and you will be given access to the Darvis IDE. Once you're in Darvis, you're ready to actually start first of all designing deep learning models, and then from there you can go ahead and create your source code. But let's start off with actually designing the deep learning model. Once we design it, we'll create the source code and then actually train the model. Let's go ahead and start drawing a design for our model. Now, of course, there are actually lots of other predefined designs that we can go off of. Let's actually take a look at some of them. You can start off with, say, VGG19, which is, of course, an extremely advanced 19-layer convolutional neural network that achieved high, high accuracy at the ImageNet Challenge, or the ImageNet dataset. Uh, in fact, as you can see here, this over here is how the VGG19 neural network is defined without code using the Darviz IDE. From here, I can go ahead and edit this neural network however I want to. Now, what I mean by this is that I can either edit this neural network, I can create an entirely new neural network, I can do whatever I want to. But let me give you a quick example by, say, creating a very simple convolutional neural network that will work on the MNIST dataset. Now, there are lots of other predefined designs that this actually provides you. For example, uh, in the ICLR Striving for Simplicity paper, there are two models, A and B. They provide both models here. Uh, you can actually take a look at model A over here and model B over here as well. You also have a basic CNN design, which is uh, extremely, uh, extremely simple. Uh, and so essentially these designs are meant to get you familiar with the interface that Darvis provides. But now that you're a little bit familiar with it, I'll bring you a little bit more into depth and show you what this actually consists of. Let's take a look. I'm going to create a new, uh, a new flow, a new uh, Darviz IDE flow, and of course this is based off of the Node-RED editor, which is why these are called flows and why this might be a little familiar to some of you. Uh, however, you can actually go ahead and start with, say, a data layer. And of course it starts off with bringing in your data. Now in this case, uh, let's just call this MNIST data. Uh, I won't tell it that I'm using a pre-existing data source, but I'll tell it that there are 28 rows, 28 columns, and three channels to, these, uh, to this image. Uh, currently, only the Python pickle format is, uh, is supported at the time of recording. However, LevelDB, LMDB, and I'm sure many more are to come. One thing that I do personally really hope uh, actually does come through uh, is support for essentially just a folder of images. Uh, and within the folder you'd have many subfolders, uh, each subfolder containing the images for a different class, uh, and the, uh, the higher level folder uh, containing all the subfolders uh, for those classes. Uh, however, from there, you can actually tell it things like the batch size, you can tell it uh, where exactly uh, the, the data set will be found, uh, you can tell it things like the validation path, and of course the test path. And so you can tell it essentially where it'll find the training data, validation data, and test data. You can also tell it some more data augmentation features. Uh, for example, the crop size with the rows, columns, and channels, uh, whatever else you'd like to do there. And from there you can just click on done, and there you go. You've got an MNIST data set there. Now, of course, though, it, your convolutional neural network will start off with a convolutional layer. So I'm just going to drag in a convolutional layer. I'll then make a connection from the data set to the convolutional layer. I'll then open up this convolutional layer and change this to suit my needs. Now let's just say that 64 filters sounds good. Uh, maybe we want to go for a 5x5 five five, uh, kernel, maybe a 2x2 two two stride, or, or a 1x1 one one stride, we can keep that 1x1. One one. Uh, border mode, just keep that valid, initialization, we don't need to change that. Uh, bias can say the same, and the rest are really internal things that we don't need to worry about. Of course, though, Darvis does support retraining, so you can actually set this to true or false, and you can learn more about that in another video that will be, there will be a link to the in the description to uh, once it is released. Uh, of course, that's coming out soon as well. And then you can just go ahead and click done, and you'll be done designing your convolutional neural, or, your, or at least this convolutional layer. 
Now after this, you can go ahead and see what comes after your convolutional layer, which in this case, of course, is an activation layer. So let's take the rectified linear unit layer and make a connection between the convolutional layer and that layer. We'll then go ahead and take a pooling layer and attach it to the end after the rectified linear unit layer. I'll just go ahead and take a look at its parameters. This all seems good. Uh, max pooling is good. Uh, trainable is uh, is okay. Uh, yeah, of course, it doesn't need to be true or false. That isn't technically trained. Uh, no layer name. And there we go. That's perfect. And so from here, it's as easy as quite literally selecting those nodes, pasting them in, and then just making connections. That's all I need to do. Make that connection, and then change the parameters however I'd like to. Say that I want a 3x3 three three kernel now, and say uh, 128 filters. I'll then copy this one more time, paste it in, put them wherever I'd like them, make the connection between pooling and convolution, change the parameters however I'd like to, and from there you can see that we have designed most of the convolutional neural network, and after this you can actually go ahead and get a flattened layer, go from pooling to flatten this time, get a dense layer, drag from flatten to dense, you can change the parameters within your dense, for example, let's just say I only want 256 nodes. Drag in another dense layer, say that yes, I want 512 nodes now. Drag in one more dense layer, and let's just say that this only has 10 nodes, this will be your output. Drag, and from there, you've got your convolutional neural network set up. But of course, though, you have to have activation functions between these layers. And so not only does it, of course, this supports many different activation layers, including sigmoid and softmax. So I'm just going to drag sigmoid in between these two dense layers, and another sigmoid between these two dense layers, and then drag a softmax to the very end over here, drag the dense output to the softmax, bring that over here, or we can actually bring that over here, uh, and then, finally, we're going to take, I mean, actually, you know, this is a great time to show you one of the features of Darvis. If I were to go ahead and save this model, you can see that uh, Darvis's unicorn has forecasted some errors in the design, and so the softmax node cannot be a destination node, it cannot be the output node. You have to have a separate dedicated output node, in this case a loss or accuracy layer. In this case, I'm going to go for an accuracy layer. So I'm going to take one of the accuracy layers, drag from softmax to accuracy, and if I go ahead and save, you can see that the unicorn says that the design model is perfectly fine and it will work with our code. From now I can, uh, from, 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 from here I can actually go ahead and convert this model to source code, and the source code will be used inside of Python with Keras in order to give me the results that I desire. Let's take a look at it. Now from here, just click on create source code, and it's literally as simple as that. You just type in your job name, I'll call this test3, I tell it which, which model we're going for, in this case it automatically named it as modest enough, so we'll go for that one. I want it to work with TensorFlow, I have a GPU available on my system, and I will create this job. And as simple as that, you have finished your deep learning task. That's it. You open up the code in, say, Xcode, it's a simple Python script, 7 kilobytes, and as you can see, you've got this efficient Python code, and of course they're always working on it to make it even better, and all of this allows you to, I mean, it's automatically generated 151 lines of code for you. And of course, all of this code will be used to train your convolutional neural network. You didn't have to type a single line of this code, and yet it will train, validate, and test your model for you. In fact, very soon, Darviz is actually going to be releasing a bunch of new features, including a deep learning model supervisor and advisor, as I like to call it. That is, of course, 
empowered by more deep learning. Okay, so that's what I had to go over today in this video. Thank you very much for joining in. I really do hope you enjoyed. Uh, and of course, you were able to learn from this video and its content today. So thank you very much for joining in. That's going to be all I had to cover. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like down below. And of course, share it with your friends or family if you think it could help them as well. Apart from that, of course, if you have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, please do make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. Email it to me at tajimanygmail.com or tweet it to me at tajimany. Apart from that, if you have any more, uh, if you really do like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And of course, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, please do make sure to hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button below to be notified via Google notification and email whenever I release new content. So thank you very much for joining in today. That's going to be all for this video. Goodbye.